Ricky and Jamie, please find your way to the desk and start the show. Jamie, please find your way to the desk and the start desk? the show. Okay, well, I mean, I guess I'll just walk and Super easy, I fall simple into thing a hole. to do. <laughs> the desk. Hmm. The desk. So we gotta get it started. We gotta say, enjoy the ride. No, this is the other one, Jamie. All oh, right, hang on for the loop. Oh, I that's feel like a human. you're walking like a crab. I am walking like a crab. I can't see it. I can Crabs see it. know exactly how to find their way. Ah! ah, ah found a chair. I think we found the Is desk. Is it my chair? We found a way to their desk. Hang, Hang on, on for, for the loop. loop. Did you do the arms? I did. Oh, okay, good. Four, three, two, one. Ooh, okay, I have a I have a thing. What's the thing? The thing is a paper. Like paper. It's paper. Do you think it says something on it? Yeah, that's my guess. There's nothing else on the table that oh, I can feel. The, uh, oh, it, it got taken away from me. I bet that sign said something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, here's what's about to happen next for Ricky and Jamie, but they don't know. Yeah, Ricky <laughs> and Jamie are gonna fight an alligator. <laughs> Did you get something else? No, but I'm hearing it. Ah! Ricky and Jamie, which sock is the smallest? Do you think you found it? Ring your bell. What? Okay, are we allowed to touch now? Which sock is the smallest? Okay. What? That's silly. Oh, that is wet. Uh, uh, yeah, this uh. one's wet. Okay, this is my contender right there. Uh-huh. Oh, well, I guess I'm choosing this one because it, it came off. Oh, that's... Uh, did I hear, and then, and then uh. they, did they say ring Ah, bell? I found it. Ring it. Wait, are we? <laughs> oh, wait, is this like a contest? Like, do I pick it up and find a bell? Find a bell, Jamie. Uh, find that bell. All Gosh, right. I really hope we're actually looking for a bell and then. And it's being brought back. Hey! hey how did you bell? Where was it? I had human intervention. Oh, okay. Just your chair. <laughs> so sorry. Small as suck. I think I have this. Wait, what? I need to ring the bell. Ah. Oh, there it is. I think I found the smallest sock. I found the smallest sock. What? Trade socks. socks. <sighs> oh my gosh, Ricky definitely had the smallest uh -huh, sock. Yeah. I'm getting something put on me. Oh, okay. Is something going to be thrown at my face? My Maybe. heart is racing. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, let's just. Oh. Whatever's going to happen, just do it already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting to be hit with slime. Ah! This is what has been added to me. Uh, oh, here, I can tie it. Yeah, yeah oh, I, I can tell you what it is. I'm wearing an apron of some sort. Oh, yeah, no, you're get, definitely gonna get slimed. Ah! There are lots of things that can make us feel afraid. Spiders, public speaking, heights. Can I let you in on a secret? Sometimes I'm actually still afraid of the dark. I know, it doesn't make any sense, right? An adult that's afraid of the dark. But it's not really the darkness that I'm afraid of. It's the fact that I can't see around the corner and I don't know what comes next. So my brain starts to stress out and think of all of these unrealistic scenarios like, oh my goodness, what if a bear pops out from behind the tree and tries to eat me? That's what happens when I try to control everything. Let me be totally honest with you. In my life, when it comes to fear, it's not just unrealistic scenarios like bears popping out from behind trees. Recently, I've had a lot of life change and some of it's been really great, but Honestly, even some of the good things make me nervous because I don't know what's gonna happen after that. Those kinds of nerves make me fearful and they make me dwell on things that I can't control. It makes me feel like I'm stuck and I can't move forward. When I try to control everything in my life, I just end up spinning myself up into a big ball of stress because there's no way I can see or know or control everything in my life. Maybe you're like me. Maybe you worry about what's around the corner or what's gonna happen next. Maybe you're trying to make new friends or moving or just going through something really big that feels like you're never gonna make it through. Believe me, I know the feeling. Let me share a verse with you that's helped me. Look up toward the sky. Who created everything you see? The Lord causes the stars to come out at night one by one. He calls out each one of them by name. His power and strength are great so that none of the stars is missing. This means that God knows where the stars go and he knows each one of them by name. And where I find comfort in this verse is that if God's got the stars, that means he's got me and he's got you too. 
He is in control, so you and I don't have to be. So the next time that you're afraid of what comes next, try saying this. I've got this because God's got me. Vicky and Jamie, where is the sugar? Ring your bell when you find it. Where's oh. the sugar? Where's the sugar? Oh yeah. Oh. What is that? <laughs> where is I the sugar? I think it's a fake spider. Oh. Oh, it's a fake cockroach. <laughs> oh, that was not a fake cockroach. That was something else. Where is the? That's cinnamon. Okay. Oh, gross. Ooh, wait. Oh, well, that's either sugar or salt. All right, one way to find out, Jamie, take a pinch and take a taste. Are we allowed to? I wasn't sure if we just had to like. Oh. Mm, mine was salt. Oh no, that was like garlic salt. <laughs> I Ooh. like it. <laughs> Did you find it? Nope, more salt. Can I take these off? Can I move them I found out? it, I found it, I found the sugar. You found the sugar? I did here. Where? It's in this, I found the sugar. Sugar? Mmm, give me some more. Yay! Woo, found the sugar. Thank you, voice, now what? Hello. Ricky, open your mouth, please. Are you doing it, Ricky? Uh, no, I am very hesitant. Are you doing it? I, uh, I guess so. Uh. Ah! Huh? <laughs> what, is, what are they doing, Ricky? Ah. It's Pop Rock! Pop Rock! Pop Rock! Who goes there? Ah. Oh, you got a sign. You got a sign. I got a sign too. Read my sign. My sign is helpful. Mmm. Do, 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 do. And hope you read it, because it's gone. Oh, we got another one. All right, we all ready? All set? It's time for the quiz thing. I like knowing things. Information and I are like this. We're best friends. I like having answers. And you seem to know this because you've sent me some big questions that you want answers for. This quiz void has no mailbox. How are these letters getting here? Here's a stack of things that you wanted me to find out for you. What's the biggest dog? Well, weight-wise, it's the English Mastiff, which can get up to 200 pounds. Height-wise, it's a Great Dane named Zeus that lives in Texas. He stands almost three and a half feet. Let's see, what does this one say? Have you seen a donkey? Yes. Why do cats purr? Well, what do you think? Which one of these is not a reason why cats purr? Is it A, to grow fur, B, they're hungry, C, to soothe themselves, or D, for bone health? Which one of these is not a reason why cats purr? Go ahead and shout it out. Okay, well, unless some scientist discovers otherwise, it has nothing to do with growing fur. The answer is A. Studies show that cat purrs can mean a lot of different things. Those adorable little cat purrs are saying, feed me, or protect me, or witness me strengthening these brittle bones. Okay, lightning round. Why are bananas yellow? Ethylene, which is the hydrocarbon gas that ripens the banana from green to yellow and from starchy inside to sweet, delicious fruit. It's yellow so that you know it's ready to eat. Why are buses yellow? A man named Frank Sear standardized the color of buses to yellow to make them safer and easier to mass produce. The official name of the color is National School Bus Glossy Yellow. Why are sunflowers yellow? Uh, <laughs> hey guys, feel like we got on a real uh, yellow kick here. This is like, uh, why are pencils yellow? Why is mustard yellow? Why you no good yellow bellied? Oh, here we go. What is the strongest animal on earth? Depends on the category. When it comes to punches and kicks, the strongest animal is the red kangaroo. If you're talking about lifting weight, it's the Asian elephant. Bite strength, that's the saltwater crocodile. So, the strongest animal on earth would be the redwater elecrocaroo, patent pending. You know, I have questions too. Why do fireflies have light up butts? What's the deal with belly button? What's for dinner? What happens next? What if the thing I fear most comes true? Some of these questions I can answer with some research, but what about the uncertainty of questions that we can't answer? The what's next and the what ifs. I kind of like it that no person has all the answers. I don't have all the answers. You don't have all the answers. It teaches us to enjoy some mystery in our lives. Another word for this is wonder. If we really knew everything, would we ever wonder? Practicing wonder helps you build up a tolerance for the unknown. God designed us to wonder. He wanted us to be curious about animal sounds and clouds and all the yellow items. So instead of staying worried, 
we can stay curious. So how do you stay curious? Well, you can turn off your technology for a while and explore a new place or a new skill. Change a routine on purpose. Look at all the things around you that God has made and all the things that he cares for. You can start a journal and get lost writing down all your thoughts. When I wonder, what I like to do is I like to get outside. I go on a walk and I focus on where God has faithfully answered my questions in the past. You could do that too. If it feels like fear of the unknown is keeping you from being able to live your life, tell someone. Open up about it to a trusted leader in your life. And if tomorrow brings some questions that are out of your control, don't get nervous, get curious. Curiosity is looking for the wonderful and being full of wonder even in uncertain situations. If you're gonna stand around and ask what if, ask this question. What if I gave God the chance to surprise me? I'm the quiz man, goodbye! Oh, hey bud, hmm? go on the wrong oh, way. Oh. Go on the wrong way, this way. Ricky, put your hand inside the item on the desk and tell us, oh. is it alive? Is it alive? Mm. Is it alive? Is it, is it alive? <sighs> is it alive? Worst case scenario. Okay, worst case scenario. It There's is. a piranha. That's your, that. Worst case. I'm gonna put my hand inside. Ah! <laughs> what was that? I'm listening. See if there's any movement. Something fuzzy. Did I just make that up? All right. I'm just, did I just make up that fuzzy feeling? Is it? I just can't tell. Is it a really long, ah! You did it again! Wait, what's happening? Why am I not covering up my chin? Can't do it again! Uh, no. <laughs> no, it is not alive. It's not alive. Good, I think that means good answer. That, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever I touched in there. Hmm. Hmm. Jamie, put your hand inside the item on the desk and tell us, is it alive? I mean, you know, I, I mean. <laughs> I mean, what would be like the worst thing that would happen if I like didn't? Okay, that's a cage. That's a cage. I'm gonna smell ah! it. Ha ha! <laughs> I didn't like it at all. I'm smelling it to see if it You're might. You're smelling yeah. it? Yeah! Ah! I think it's just a plant. And plants are living organisms, so is it alive? Ah! It was wet. I'm just gonna say, yes, it's alive. What was that? I don't know! Okay, so I'm gonna say, no, it's not alive. That either means that you got it correct or our scrambled slowly. eggs are ready. Ricky and Jamie, for this next one, can you tell us, is um. it alive? Oh, I found a cage. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, no. Okay, all right, okay. Ricky, mm -mm. Jamie. Mm -mm. Ricky, Jamie, don't move, okay? Keep, keep, keep the blindfolds on. <laughs> Be still. Okay. You could go, Jamie! <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Be still, be still. Okay. <laughs> okay, no, Ricky! <laughs> ah! All right, I think they're handing me a sign. So earlier this month, I started this book, and it's a made up story about this guy who goes on a hiking trip for two months by himself every single year. And one year when he's on his trip, he meets these two scientists who kidnap him, throw him in a spaceship, and launch him into outer space. And you'd think that when he's in outer space, he would be panicking because everything was out of his control. But in fact, the opposite starts to happen. When he's staring out the window and looking at all the stars, he starts to experience this thrill. He starts to feel excitement. And he says that the ancients got it right when they didn't call it outer space, but they called it the heavens above. And what I think this story is trying to tell us is that just because something is out of our control, that doesn't mean that it's necessarily bad. In fact, it can be good. And I also think about this verse. It's in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 26. And it says this, look up toward the sky. Who created everything you see? The Lord causes the stars to come out at night one by one. He calls out each one of them by name. His power and strength are great, so none of the stars is missing. And what this verse is telling us is that if God is the creator of the universe, then you can trust 
that he is in control. He has a plan for the birds, the flowers, the stars, the earth, and for you. And following him is an invitation to enjoy mystery. So the next time that something changes or is out of your control, don't look down in fear, but look up in wonder. Because just because something is out of our control, that doesn't mean that it's bad. And God is a God who can be trusted. Scared of the unknown? Trade your trembling for truth. God is in control. Instead of asking what will happen tomorrow, ask what is God up to? What if all your wonder prepares you for something new? When you fear what isn't clear, you can trust that God has a plan. You can stay curious and say, I've got this because God's got me. Stay calm, stay cool, stay curious. Ricky and Jamie, you have passed. This is your gift. From the desk, choose your tattoo. Oh, a tattoo? Finally. Are you serious? It was this my destiny one. to end up with this tattoo. All right, this one. Is there anything on the desk that we can put the tattoo on with? Ah! Jamie, you're brilliant! That goes there, and then this goes here. I think I'm gonna put one on my neck. Do you have an apron on yet? <laughs> I just don't know why I have an apron on and you don't. I don't know the vibe that my tattoos give off, so I don't know if I should go or if I should go hee hee. <laughs> did a tattoo? Your silence is telling me it didn't. Enjoy the ride! Oh my gosh, that scared me. Y'all can go home now. Oh, jump scare Jimmy! Jump scare Jimmy! Jump scare Jimmy! Do you know what we've been through? Nice tattoos. <laughs> Thank you. Oh Do we have jump scare Jimmy tattoos on? All okay, right. let's see our tattoos. Here we go. Oh, what nice. do you have? I also have a deer. Oh, that's cool. I have okay. a deer and a panda. What's on my neck? <laughs> what? A I have a cat, cat on my neck? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and tell us what you think of our tattoos in the comments. Which one's your favorite? <laughs>